Alright everybody, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. In the fourth lesson in this series, we're going to continue our dive taking a look at arrhythmias. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about atrial and junctional arrhythmias. Alright you guys, like I said, this is going to be our fourth lesson in this series in which we continue our discussion about arrhythmias. Specifically in this lesson, we're going to talk about our atrial and junctional arrhythmias. In the last lesson, which is going to be linked to up above, we started our discussion with arrhythmias talking about our sinus arrhythmias, our premature complexes, and our Brady and Tachy arrhythmias. And so we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to start into our atrial arrhythmias. But before we begin, if this is your first time to this channel and you want to see more of this in-depth critical care educational content such as this, please do subscribe below. Make sure you hit the notification bell though and select all notifications. This way you'll ensure you're alerted as soon as our new videos become available. We really value your subscription, likes, and comments as they really go a long way to help support our channel and our videos. So for that, thank you guys. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Eddie Watson, and I will be presenting this lesson for you. And so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into our atrial arrhythmias. And the first and probably one of the most common and well-known rhythms that we're going to see and talk about is going to be atrial fibrillation, or what we often refer to as AFib. And when we talk about AFib, probably one of the most notable things about it is that it's a pretty chaotic rhythm. But within some of that chaos, we do have recognizable QRS complexes. So if we really think about it, we've got a chaotic baseline with these QRS complexes that pop up. And so what's really happening in AFib is you have these atria that are just fibrillating. They don't have this organized contraction. And that's what you're seeing with this chaotic baseline. And so the AV node is just being bombarded with impulses. And as a result, some of these impulses will get through to the AV node, and some of them won't. And AFib is typically the result of some sort of damage to the structure of the heart. This can be as a result of disease process, either acute or chronic. And oftentimes you'll typically see this in your, your elderly patients. There are a couple of concerns, though, that we have with this rhythm. The first of these is that we're going to lose that atrial kick. So if you remember that atria contracts just before the ventricle does, helping to really fill up that ventricle before it contracts. But since we don't have that organized contraction here, we're not getting that atrial kick. And therefore, we're going to lose about 20% of our preload into that ventricle. And this can have a sometimes profound impact on our patient's blood pressure. The second concern with this is since we don't have that contraction, that blood is often not moving through the atrium as well as it should, and so this puts our patients at risk of thrombus. And if that clot forms and it moves into the ventricle and then out into the circulation, this could potentially cause a problem for our patient. So definitely important to be able to identify this one. So a couple of our defining characteristics for this are we're going to have an absent P wave. And remember, think it's going to be chaotic. And so this is going to be one of our, our hallmark signs of this. And really, you can see here, we don't have an organized contraction or P wave. You may see things along the way that kind of maybe look like you have a P wave, but really you have that disorganized contraction of the atria. Some parts are contracting a little bit more strongly than others, and sometimes it will give you this false appearance. But if you just look at the rest of the line there, everything is pretty chaotic. Therefore, we can probably be pretty sure that this is AFib. In addition to that, since we know this beat is coming from the atria, we're going to end up with that narrow QRS. But another hallmark of this is its irregularity. You're going to have a pretty irregular rhythm. And so again, we can see that here. If we look at the distance here and we look at the distance here, and then again, the distance here. If you just look at it, you can see the irregularity in it. And you're often going to see your heart rate on the rhythm bouncing around. 
And you can have some pretty wide variances in, in how often those impulses are getting through that AV node. So like we talked about, we definitely have the irregular rhythm. That QRS complex is going to be a narrow complex. And we certainly showed the chaotic absent P waves. Therefore, with this criteria met, we can define this as a patient being an atrial fibrillation or AFib. All right, so the next rhythm that we are going to talk about is our atrial flutter or A flutter. And probably right away you can see the difference in our rhythm here than the AFib that we were just looking at. And what's happening in A flutter is we've developed some sort of re-entry circuit within the atria, and so it creates a loop of the impulse that was originally generated and loops it back to the AV node so that it comes through more frequently than it was supposed to. Now probably our hallmark sign for A flutter is going to be our sawtooth P waves. And so if you look at these right here, it almost has the look of the blade of a saw. It has that toothy edge, and you just see that repeating throughout our rhythm here. Now with that, you're typically going to have, if you were to count out the rate for these flutter waves, you're going to have these flutter waves with a rate greater than 250. So these flutter waves are going to be happening pretty frequently. Fortunately, not all of the impulses are going to be passed through that AV node, and we see that happening here as we have flutter waves without a QRS complex. But every so often, that, that impulse will get passed along, and we will have that QRS, which in this case is going to be a narrow QRS. But as I said, it's really that sawtooth appearance of those flutter waves that's really going to be the telltale sign that your patient's in a flutter. Now this ratio of flutter waves to QRS complexes can vary, and one of the other more common occurrences that we'll see is an A flutter at a 2 to 1 ratio. And essentially what's happening here is every other flutter wave is making it through as a QRS complex. And so here we can see that flutter wave is happening at a pretty fast rate. And with every other one making it through the AV node, you're going to end up with a heart rate that's pretty fast. Now, sometimes you're going to be able to distinguish this sawtooth appearance in that indistinguishable T wave, P wave. But sometimes you're not, and it's really not going to be any distinguishable from an SVT. And it may require further investigation with either an EKG or even using something like adenosine to slow things down for a bit so you can see what's underlying. Otherwise, the same causes that are going on here in terms of when we're just looking at our normal A flutter. But I did want to show you guys this so that you can see an example of this and know that it may not actually be SVT. All right, so moving away from the atrium now. We're going to move on to our next rhythm, which is something that we call a junctional rhythm. And so what's happening with a junctional rhythm is our signal or our impulse is actually originating from the AV junction. And so if you really remember from part one of this series where we talked about that conduction system and we talked about the the AV node also having that same automaticity that the SA node has, but that it has a slightly different rate. And therefore, the pacemaker rate that we get from the AV node is actually a rate of 40 to 60. And so that's going to be one of our hallmark signs here, is that we do have that rate of 40 to 60. And so sure enough, in this example, if you count out our QRS complexes, you see that we have 4. Therefore, we know the heart rate in this example is 40. Now, along with this, you're also going to have that narrow QRS. Again, because we're initiating an impulse from above the bundle of his, so that signal is going to move quickly through the ventricle still. But here, like when we talked about with our PJC, we're either going to have an absent or inverted P wave. So once again, if you look at our example here, there's our P wave, and that's definitely upside down. Although you can also sometimes just get a flat isoelectric line that goes across here. But looking at our QRS complex, we definitely do have a narrow QRS complex. And like we talked about, our rate is 40. Therefore, we know that we could classify this as a junctional rhythm. 
Now within these junctional rhythms, we do actually technically have three different rhythms. We have our normal junctional rhythm, we have what we call accelerated junctional, or we have what we call junctional tachycardia. And really the only difference between these different junctional rhythms and just a normal junctional rhythm is gonna be the heart rate that we find. So in an accelerated junctional, you're actually gonna have what appears to be a normal heart rate. So you'll have a heart rate between 60 and 100. And then junctional tachycardia, if you haven't figured it out, is gonna have a heart rate greater than 100. And the reason that we can sometimes see these increased heart rates is that the AV node is still impacted by the sympathetic nervous system. So it has direct innerviation from the sympathetic nerve, as well as it can be impacted by catecholamines that are released that are going to speed up our heart rate. Or sometimes these can also be caused by some sort of ischemia that's just causing an increase or an enhanced automaticity within that AV node. But otherwise, outside of the heart rate, everything else is going to be the same. You're still going to have that narrow QRS as well as either those absent or inverted P waves. So definitely be on the lookout for those because that's really a hallmark sign of our junctional rhythms is gonna be that absent or inverted P wave. All right, and so that sums up our atrial and ventricular rhythms. In this lesson, we talked about the different atrial arrhythmias that you're gonna come across such as AFib and A flutter, including its two to one variation as well as we talked about some of the differences and the things that you're going to see with the various junctional rhythms. Hopefully these explanations made sense for you guys, and again, hopefully this information will be useful for you guys when it comes to interpreting these rhythms within your patient. For the next lesson in this series, we're going to continue our look at arrhythmias, and we're going to move on to the ventricular rhythms. And so with that said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I really hope that you guys found this information useful. And if you did, please go down below and hit that like button because it really does help support this channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel in order to get notification of our latest videos. And keep an eye out for part five in this series, like I said, in which we're going to talk about those ventricular arrhythmias. In the meantime, though, head on over and check out one of our latest series of lessons that we did in which we covered arterial blood gases. And so with that said, I want to thank you guys for watching and you have a great day.